Chapter 3 Functions People think that computer science is the art of geniuses, but the actual reality is the opposite. Just many people doing things that build on each other like a wall of many stones by Donald Knuth. Functions are the bread and butter of JavaScript programming. The concept of wrapping a piece of program in a value has many uses. It gives us a way to structure larger programs, to reduce repetition, to associate names with subprograms, and to isolate these subprograms from each other. The most obvious application of functions is defining new vocabulary. Creating new words in prose is usually bad style. But in programming, it is indispensable. Typical adult English speakers have some 20,000 words in their vocabulary. Few programming languages come with 20,000 commands built in. And the vocabulary that is available tends to be more precisely defined, and thus less flexible than in human language. Therefore, we usually have to introduce new concepts to avoid repeating ourselves too much. Defining a function. A function definition is a regular binding where the value of the binding is a function. For example, this code defines square to refer to a function that produces the square of a given number. Const square equals function, parentheses x, bracket, return x, asterisk s x semicolon close bracket semicolon console.log parentheses square parentheses 12 close parentheses twice semicolon and uh, forward slash forward slash arrow 144 All right, a function, so it squares x. So squaring 12 gives 144. A function is created with an expression that starts with the keyword function. Functions have a set of parameters, in this case, only x, and a body, which contains the statements that are to be executed when the function is called. The function body of a function created this way must always be wrapped in braces, even when it consists of only a single statement. A function can have multiple parameters or no parameters at all. In the following example, make noise does not list any parameter names, whereas power lists two. Const make noise equals function parentheses bracket console.log, parentheses, quote, pling, exclamation point, unquote, close parentheses, semicolon, uh, bracket, close bracket, semicolon, make noise, empty parentheses, semicolon, and apparently it gives, it prints the word pling. Oh, I see. Okay, so this has multiple parameters or none, and the following example does not list any parameter names, whereas power lists two. Let's see. So power function base exponent let result equals one, four, parentheses, let count equals zero, count less than exponent, count plus plus, bracket result, asterisk equals base, semicolon, close bracket, return result, console.log power 2, comma 10. Z 
see, the top one prints Pling. Some functions produce a value such as power and square, and some don't, such as make noise, whose only result is a side effect. A return statement determines the value the function returns. When control comes across such a statement, it immediately jumps out of the current function and gives a return value to the code that called the function. A return keyword without an expression after it will cause the function to return undefined. Functions that don't have a return statement at all, such as make noise, similarly return undefined. Parameters to a function behave like regular bindings, but their initial values are given by the caller of the function, not the code in the function itself. Bindings and scopes. Each binding has a scope, which is the part of the program in which the binding is visible. For bindings defined outside of any function or block, the scope is the whole program. You can refer to such bindings wherever you want. These are called global. But bindings created for function parameters or declared inside a function can be referenced only in that function. So they are known as local bindings. Every time the function is called, new instances of these bindings are created. This provides some isolation between functions. Each function call acts in its own little world, its local environment, and can often be understood without knowing a lot about what's going on in the global environment. Bindings declared with let and const are in fact local to the block that they are declared in. So if you create one of those inside of a loop, the code before and after the loop cannot see it. In pre-2015 JavaScript, only functions created new scopes. So old-style bindings created with the var keyword are visible throughout the whole function that they appear in, or throughout the global scope, if they are not in a function. Let x equal 10. If true, parentheses true, bracket, let y equals 20, there z equal 30, there's semicolons after those, console.log parentheses x plus y plus z, close parentheses semicolon. So uh, that gives 60, 30 plus 20 plus 10. Let's see, close bracket down here, uh, forward slash, oh, so forward slash forward slash arrow 60, forward slash forward slash y is not visible here console.log x plus z, uh, 10 plus 30, which is 40. Um, there. And there's the 60 and the 40. Each scope can look out into the scope around it. So x is visible inside the block in the example. The exception is when multiple bindings have the same name. In that case, code can see only the innermost one. For example, when the code inside the have function refers to n, it is seeing its own n, not the global n. const have equals function of n bracket return n over 2 semicolon bracket semicolon let n equal 10 semicolon console.log parentheses have parentheses 100 double close parentheses semicolon and uh, forward slash forward slash arrow 50 console.log uh, parentheses n semicolon forward slash forward slash n Have a hundred nested scope. JavaScript distinguishes not just global and local bindings, 
Blocks and functions can be created inside other blocks and functions, producing multiple degrees of locality. For example, this function, which outputs the ingredients needed to make a batch of hummus, has another function inside of it. So const hummus equals function parentheses factor bracket const ingredient equals function parentheses amount comma unit comma name bracket let ingredient amount equal amount asterisk factor semicolon if parentheses ingredient amount is greater than one uh, bracket unit plus equals quote s unquote semicolon bracket console.log parentheses as uh, apostrophe string parent, uh, bracket ingredient amount close back bracket string bracket unit close bracket string bracket name close bracket apostrophe parentheses semicolon bracket semicolon ingredient one comma quotes can comma quotes around chickpeas close parentheses semicolon ingredient 0.25 cup tahini ingredient 0.25 cup lemon juice again ingredient parentheses one comma quote clove unquote comma quote garlic unquote parentheses semicolon ingredient two tablespoon olive oil and ingredient 0 0.5 teaspoon cumin or cumin. The code inside the ingredient function can see the factor binding from the outer function, but its local bindings, such as unit or ingredient amount, are not visible in the outer function. The set of bindings visible inside a block is determined by the place of that block in the program text. Each local scope can also see all the local scopes that contain it, and all scopes can see the global scope. This approach to binding visibility is called lexical scoping. Functions as values. A function binding usually simply acts as a name for a specific piece of the program. Such a binding is defined once and never changed. This makes it easy to confuse the function and its name. But the two are different. A function value can do all the things that other values can do. You can use it in arbitrary expressions, not just call it. It is possible to store a function value in a new binding, pass it as an argument to a function, and so on. Similarly, a binding that holds a function is still just a regular binding and can, if not constant, be assigned a new value like so. Let lunch missiles equal function parentheses bracket missile system dot launch um, parentheses in quotes now semicolon bracket semicolon if safe mode in parentheses bracket launch missiles equals function parentheses bracket forward slash star do nothing star forward slash bracket semicolon bracket so if you run it reference error safe mode is not defined defined line four in function eval in Chapter 5, we will discuss the interesting things that can be done by passing around function values to other functions. Declaration Notation There is a slightly shorter way to create a function binding. When the function keyword is used at the start of a statement, it works differently. Function square x, bracket, return x star x, semicolon and then close the bracket. This is a function declaration. The statement defines the binding square 
and points it at the given function. It is slightly easier to write and doesn't require a semicolon after the function. There is one subtlety with this form of function definition. Console.log, parentheses, quote, the future says, colon, unquote, comma, future, parentheses, and then another parentheses, semicolon, function, future, empty parentheses, semicolon, um, bracket, return, quote, you'll never have flying cars, unquote, semicolon, bracket. So this prints, the future says, you'll never have flying cars. The preceding code works even though the function is defined below the code that uses it. Function declarations are not part of the regular top to bottom flow of control. They are conceptually moved to the top of their scope and can be used by all the code in that scope. This is sometimes useful because it offers the freedom to order code in a way that seems meaningful without worrying about having to define all functions before they are used. Uh, so future is up here and console log says to print it, but later on future is defined here. Arrow functions. There's a third notation for functions which looks very different from the others. Instead of the function keyword, it uses an arrow. That's the equals with a greater than. Made up of an equal sign and a greater than character. Not to be confused with the greater than or equal operator, which is written the greater than first and then the equal second. So example, const power equals parentheses base comma exponent, the uh, arrow equals greater than bracket, let result equals one semicolon, four parentheses, let count equals zero semicolon, count less than exponent, semicolon, count plus plus, close parentheses bracket, result asterisk equals base, close bracket, return result, semicolon, close bracket, semicolon. The arrow comes after the list of parameters and is followed by the function's body. It expresses something like this input, the parameters, produces this result, the body. When there is only one parameter name, you can omit the parentheses around the parameter list. If the body is a single expression rather than a block in braces, that expression will be returned from the function. So these two definitions of square do the same thing. Console square one equals x arrow um, brackets return x asterisk x and with a sem semicolon. Const square two equals x um, arrow x star x, semicolon. When an arrow function has no parameters at all, its parameter list is just an empty set of parentheses. Const horn equals empty parentheses arrow bracket console.log, parentheses, quote, toot, unquote, close parentheses, semicolon, close bracket, semicolon. Ah, uh, the console log should give us something, right? No. There is no deep reason to have both arrow functions and function expressions in the language. Apart from a minor detail, which we'll discuss in Chapter 6, they do the same thing. Arrow functions were added in 2015, mostly to make it possible to write small function expressions in a less verbose way. We'll be using them a lot in Chapter 5. The call stack. The way control flows through functions is somewhat involved. Let's take a closer look at it. 
Here is a sample program that makes a few function calls. Function greet who, console log hello in quotes plus who, greet Harry, console.log in quotes by. So the console log prints hello, uh, greet is Harry, and console log by. Okay. A run through this program goes roughly like this. The call to greet causes control to jump to the start of that function. Line 2. The function calls console.log, which takes control, does its job, and then returns control to line 2. There it reaches the end of the greet function, so it returns to the place that called it, which is line 4. The line after that calls console.log again. After that returns, the program reaches its end. We could show the flow of control schematically like this. Not in function, in greet, in console.log. In greet, not in function, in console.log, not in function. Because a function has to jump back to the place that called it when it returns, the computer must remember the context from which the call happened. In one case, console.log has to return to the greet function when it is done. In the other case, it returns to the end of the program. The place where the computer stores this context is the call stack. Every time a function is called, the current context is stored on top of this stack. When a function returns, it removes the top context from the stack and uses that context to continue execution. Storing the stack requires space in the computer's memory. When the stack grows too big, the computer will fail with a message like out of stack space or too much recursion. The following code illustrates this by asking the computer a really hard question that causes an infinite back and forth between two functions. Rather, it would be infinite if the computer had an infinite stack. As it is, we will run out of space or blow the stack. So the range error, maximum call stack size exceeded, exceeded line 4 in function egg. Okay. So you had function chicken return egg. Function egg return chicken. Console log chicken plus quote came first dot unquote. So line two chicken line five egg. Line two chicken line five egg. So I got it got tired of doing that. Optional arguments. The following code is allowed and executes without any problem. Function square of x, uh, return x asterisk x semicolon in brackets, the whole thing. Console.log parentheses square parentheses four comma true comma uh, quote hedgehog close quote. Then double parentheses semicolon and the two forward slash gives 16. Let's see, square four true hedgehog. Yeah, that gives 16. We define square with only one parameter. Yet when we call it with three, the language doesn't complain. It ignores the extra arguments and computes the square of the first one. Ah. JavaScript is extremely broad-minded about the number of arguments you pass to a function. If you pass too many, the extra ones are ignored. If you pass too few, the missing parameters get assigned the value undefined. The downside of this is that it is possible, likely even, 
that you'll accidentally pass the wrong number of arguments to functions, and no one will tell you about it. The upside is that, that this behavior can be used to allow a function to be called with different numbers of arguments. For example, this minus function tries to imitate the dash operator by acting on either one or two arguments. Function minus a comma b, if b equal 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 undefined, return mi minus a semicolon, else return a minus b. Uh, semicolon, then close bracket. So console.log minus 10, that gives negative 10. Console.log minus 10 comma 5, that gives 5. It gives the second. Hmm. Yep. Oh, else return a minus b. If you write an equals operator after a parameter, followed by an expression, the value of that expression will replace the argument when it is not given. For example, this version of power makes its second argument optional. If you don't provide it or pass the value undefined, it will default to 2, and the function will behave like square. So function power base comma exponent equals 2, let result equals 1. For let count equals 0, count less than exponent, count plus plus. Result star equals base, return result. So console log power 4 gives 16. Console log power 2 comma 6 gives 64. In the next chapter, we will see a way in which a function body can get at the whole list of arguments it was passed. This is helpful because it makes it possible for a function to accept any number of arguments. For example, console.log does this. It outputs all of the values it is given. So console log C in quotes, O in quotes, and 2 gives C O 2.